Hello folks, my name is Timothy Adon. Welcome to another episode of Implementing Wise into Unreal. So today we are going to be attaching footsteps to Unreal animations. Um, I've done a little, just so that you're aware, I've done a little bit of testing beforehand because uh, it seems to work a little bit differently in the current versions than it did in the version that I was creating my game in. And I kept on getting some errors, and once we get to that point, I'll just tell you to ignore them. Um, but for now, uh, what we are going to end up doing, I recorded a bunch of footsteps ahead of time. Uh, I did some bathroom tile footsteps, hardwood floor footsteps. I have some dirt trail footsteps and some gravel and a bunch of other things. And eventually, we're going to utilize... Uh, um, a switch container for that or rather we're going to actually utilize switches but for now we're going to set that up but we're not actually going to get to the switches yet so what we're going to end up doing and there's going to be several ways that you can go about doing this uh i'm going to tell you how i'm going to do it here but i'll explain the other ways as well so first thing we're going to want is a switch container which we're going to call footsteps and actually, even before that, we're going to create a new actor mixer and call that player so that we can stick this in there. Oops. boop -a deep So we have this. Um, I've already, in game syncs, created a switch group called Material Ground, which is going to contain all of my different footstep types. So tile, hardwood, gravel, forest, dirt. And then in here, I'm going to create... So here's where you can kind of do this in several different ways. Um, you could just create a random container for each of your material types. Uh, if you just have like single recordings with like a whole footstep in it, which is what I technically have, then you could just say, hey, look, I have a footstep. Import. Already, already exists in origin for. Uh... Oh yeah, because I already did these tests and I deleted this for your benefit. Um, so, and we could just do that. We could just done. Um, however, I'm gonna do this a little differently. And instead, because I want to separate my heel and toe sounds to get a little bit more variance. Um, so we are instead going to create a blend container, and this is going to be tile. And then in here, we're going to create two random containers, heel and toe, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to take these first five, uh, stick these all in heel, import, yes, these all exist. And now we're going to randomly get one of these five recordings. And even further, I'm going to take this heel first. So right there is where the heel starts, right there. And there, and there, and there. And then we're going to take all of these and copy them into here. And we're going to move this over like that. And then we have separated heel and toe sounds. And this will just give you, like, you can take the same number of recordings. So this is just five recordings. But I have now given it so much variance in how it plays that these are probably going to be, like, the only five footsteps I need. I might could even use less than this, honestly. So let's just save really quick. <clears throat> and so now... Uh, right. Well, we still have to fix one problem. 
it's playing both sounds at the same time. So let's put toe at point one delay. And of course you can fix that delay to taste, you know, whatever, how, whatever speed you kind of feel like will work the best. Um, and then we need the switch group ground material default is going to be tile and this blend container is going to get set up to the tile set. And so as long as we're on switches, so dirt, oops, hey, nothing, but hardwood, nothing, tile, there you go. And we'll get those other sounds in there at some point. I haven't, shh, don't tell anybody, I haven't actually processed those yet. They're still sitting as raw audio files. Um, so this is all set up. We don't really need anything else for this. Oh, you know what we can do though? is add just a little bit of randomization just to give it a dash of extra variability. Right? And so now we've got so many variations on this sound. It'll be ridiculous. Nobody will ever know that these are just five footstep recordings. Uh, let's see. We need an event, a play event. Uh, play footsteps sounds perfect. Then we're going to go to the sound bank. We're going to throw this sucker. Oops, nope, not that one. Uh, throw this sucker in here. There we go. And then we're going to generate. That's all set. Save. And we should be done here in Wise. Yeah. Oh, so before I continue... Um, there are a few other ways that you could do these footsteps. I am doing this as a, uh, basically just a single stereo sound, um, but panned straight to the center. Uh, that's kind of nice and basic. It's easy. You could theoretically, uh, have left and right foot recordings if you wanted to have a little bit of extra detail. Uh, I don't usually bother with that. And then something else you could do is you could pan your sounds to the left and right, which could either mean duplicating um, this tiles track and then putting it in like something like a, uh, a sequence container with left and right so that it'll just automatically go left and right as it is playing. But, you know, I'm not going to do that here. You could do that yourself in your own version of this test project if you wanted to or in your own game. Um, I don't really see the need. I'm planning on just having this be a 2D sound instead of a 3D sound, since I'm just doing this as a single-player quote-unquote game, which is what I'm doing in my in the game that I am creating. But, you know, just so that you have some options, if you would like me to extrapolate, uh, feel free to mention it in the comments and I can talk to you about that. Uh, but for now, we're going to move on to Unreal. So, now that we are in Unreal, um, I've already got this. Let's just... Again, I was doing some tests just to make sure that certain things worked. Let's generate our sound banks. Make sure to pull this out of the wise picker. Perfect, it plays. Uh, so what we need to do is first things first, we need to attach that sound to the player character. So we're gonna take Oops, and of course I navigated away from it like a dummy. Uh, player sounds, footsteps. There we go, play footsteps, that is absolutely perfect. And of course that might not actually matter. I'm putting it there as kind of a placeholder because something else ends up happening. Uh, so what you're going to want to do, and I'll explain what, what else ends up happening in just a second, you'll see it. Um, go to your mesh 2P component right there, double click on the skeletal mesh, which will take you over to this. And actually, I'm kind of curious about something. Let's open this up too. 
Okay. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing there. And I swear, I'm going to explain why it is that I keep on looking at this. Um, so we're going to close that. Um, we're going to take, we're going to, so you're going to end up on this screen. After you double click on this skeletal mesh here, it'll take you to this and then click over on animation, which will open this up. Um, it defaulted me to the, uh, to the shooting montage and I just double clicked on first person run and you'll be able to scroll through this animation here or just play it and just watch it go. Um, obviously there, this is just arms because I am using the, uh, the first person example project that exists when you start on real, start a new project. Um, this is much easier if you have feet, but you can still kind of understand where the footsteps fall. So like, here's the start. That's where the first footstep would be. The arm goes up and then it swings back down to the other side. So like the other footstep would end right about there. And then the animation continues. So what we want to do is we want to trigger the animation or we want to trigger our footstep sounds based on where the animation is at the time. And that's what this little notify slot is for. So we're going to right click on that, add notify, animation notify AK event. It creates a new AK event thing right here, which then, there we go, allows us to select a sound. So we're going to put in play footstep. And then we are going to drag this over until it swings the arms back down and back up and right about there, I believe, is where we're going to add the other one. And we're just going to click on that and we're going to create another play footstep. And there we go. Done. Um, because we generated our sound banks, this should theoretically play. Oh. There you go. And so now that that works, uh, let me save that because it says it's not saved. Uh, we're going to shrink this. And we're going to go ahead and go into the project. I deleted uh, a lot of my other test sounds that were in here, just so that you know. And there we go. The sounds are all working. And of course, the thing that I kept on worrying about didn't happen. So when I was testing this out before, I kept on getting a warning message saying to actually attach the sounds to the mesh. And I think I ended up accidentally doing it this time. Um, so when you are attaching your sounds, and let's, you know, just in case that this, that was the problem, um, make sure to attach the play footsteps AK component to the actual mesh um, in your character blueprint or your character components section there. Um, otherwise, it'll scream at you. It doesn't actually matter if you if that if it screams at you. It's just a warning. It'll still play the sounds because what it ends up doing is if it if this isn't attached to that then it'll create new uh, AK components with that sound attached to it every time this, uh, this gets called. So it's not a super big deal. It might end up being a drain on your computer resources uh, if you end up having a lot of things going on. But as long as the event plays, uh, you can still modify the sound in WISE and it'll still sound great. So. Uh, that is all we are going to. Uh, that is all we are going to talk about in this one. In the next video, I am going to talk about setting up the rest of the things that we need for the switch containers to function. And if we have time, I might also set up uh, our gun sounds. Um, and we'll just build on from there. If you have any questions as to how any of this works, feel free to let me know in the comments, or you can email me uh, at timothyadon, A-D-A-N, 
at gmail.com. I will, I will happily answer any questions that anybody has. Um, and if you, um, if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe and all that other YouTube nonsense. And if you would like to support me in any way and buy me a coffee because I survive off of this stuff, uh, you can uh, support me on Ko-Fi or coffee.com or Ko-Fi. The link will be in the description. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, thank you very much. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.